Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about a very little component, but in my opinion a very handy one. It's the component percent. And in this example, if I track it, one thing you notice is the percent is from a value from 0 to 1. So we use it in this text display here, but we also use it to scale the value of this progress bar. And it's really pretty simple. I'm going to open it up. You can see we have our common component percent. In there we can insert a value between 0 and 1. If I apply it, you can see the scale of the progress bar is changed. And if we open up the blueprint, in this case we might want to open up the parent because this is a child blueprint class. But what we have here is the component percent and in there we have the float changed and also the, of course the in editor float state changed like in the other examples. This is only being used if I change something in the editor like I did here. But this is not relevant for the game. So in the game only this here will be relevant. And if we open up the parent, what this is doing, it is taking the percent value from 0 to 1 and we use it to blend between a value of 0 and 126 and scale a plane in this case on the x-axis. So we just have a plane in there. The pivot point is here and what we're doing is to scale this up and down. And so we have the effect of a progress bar. Very simple example and we are also going to create something similar just to show you how to integrate the component percent. Let's create a new blueprint actor here. First of all, we are going to add our component percent. We go into the event graph and we can use this for almost anything because with values you can do quite a lot of things. We can use it to drive the intensity of light, for example. Let's, let's do it in this example here. So I'm just going to add a point light. Let's turn down the intensity to zero. And what I want to do is use the event float changed to drive the intensity of the light. So in this case, I'm going to set the intensity. And I could directly connect them, but Remember, this value is only between 0 and 1, so we would not really be able to see it. We can, for example, multiply that by, let's use 5000 and use this value as the intensity. Or we can do it like in the other example to use a lerp. Personally, I like this approach more because in there I just can use the min and max value. So I can lerp between zero and let's also use 5000. So this for me is more readable. Let's drop it in here. You can see the light right now, it is off. And the next thing is to actually com um, connect this slider with this component. In order for that to work, we need to have our component text again. So I'm going to create it here and I'm going to copy it. Here we have our component track, like with the buttons in the previous tutorials, I can add the actor I want to have. So I'm going to edit here and also add the tag I want to trigger. And I 
think we are good to go. So let's test it out. You can see this is already working perfectly. So now the value of the light blurbs between 0 and 5000. And because we didn't have we didn't had really any explosions in the last tutorials and I'm feeling a little bad about that. Sorry for sorry for that. I'm going to edit here. So how do we want to do this? Let's not use too much explosions. So I'm going to use a do once. And the first time this value here is is one. So the light is fully on. I want to have an explosion. Let's select my explosion here. Also get the world location of my point light. And well, if there is an explosion, we are going to destroy the actor. That's maybe something you should not do because the drag component is searching for this actor. But for this example, let's just use the destroy actor here because this is a really powerful explosion. So now if I start, the light value should change. That's, that's perfect. And nothing is happening here. I can do this as often as I want to. But as soon as I reach the one value, it should explode. And now it's gone. And all of this will also happen just once. Okay, this was the uh, component percent. Very simple. You have your value here. You have your float changed event here. And you can do any, basically anything you want with it. So really excited what examples you are going to, to create and use this for. And if you have something cool, please let us know in the comments or on Discord. Thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial. Bye.